I'm Gregory Binford. I'm a professor of physics and astronomy, retired emeritus, from the University of California, Irvine. I came to know Alcor in the late 1980s, and part of that came from the fact that I'm actually better known to the public as an author of quite a few science fiction novels, one of which was inspired by Alcor. It's a novel called Chiller, published in the early 1990s, still in print, which reflects what I think will probably happen to cryonics as it evolves over the next few decades. I became interested in cryonics because it's the only scientifically plausible answer to the problem of death. And death is the big human problem. I mean, it shapes all of human psychology. The knowledge that you're going to die is available to us, but to no other animal, except perhaps dolphins and elephants. And we're the only animal that actually can do something about it. That's what modern medicine is about. But cryonics goes beyond that by looking at the promise of medicine from the future. That is, if you remain suspended cryonically, you can avail yourselves, or someone else will avail you of, the medical science of a century or so from now, which will plausibly be able to repair the damage caused by freezing you and repair whatever killed you. This is a calculated risk, and it's a bet. It's a bet about the future. It says progress will continue, and if you can remain suspended, with all the information in your mind, your brain intact, then you can perhaps be revived. This is a long shot. So many things can go wrong. You can be, be unfrozen, that's the most common risk. It can happen that the future will be radically different and will not care about people from the past. Although I kind of doubt that because look at, look at modern archeology. span Modern archeology, span is a testament to our interest in the past, and it's a huge industry. It motivates the tourism in many, many countries, like Greece, most of Europe, the ancient world. So as societies become more prosperous, they care more about their past. After all, archeology span is a science only two centuries old. A century from now, they will quite plausibly care about the people of our time, because they will be able to revive them. I'm not talking about reading hieroglyphs or un unearthing mummies. I'm talking about actually talking to the people from the past. That's a plausible reason to resuscitate them if you have much more prosperous times and you have the technology to bring them back. So that's the ultimate argument for cryonics. You, you're betting on the future. After all, every investment is a bet about the future. I came to be interested in this because I'm a science fiction writer. I went to Alcor in the late 1980s and met the people around it, a small coterie of devoted, some would say fanatics, I would say enthusiasts, who felt that this was an answer to the problem of death, a problem that animates all of human drama and animates the human psyche more than any other issue, I think, once you become an adult. So my interest in cryonics is not just a bet on the future, but the promise that I will be able to see that future. I'm a science fiction writer, what can I say? And I'm also a scientist and astronomer with considerable credentials. I'm fairly convinced that making a bet of this kind of long shot method is worth doing. And I'm among all those many people who think that the future can quite plausibly be a lot better than the present. That bet has been true through most of the last 500 years in Western civilization, and I'm pretty sure it's going to continue to be true for the future of world civilization.